Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's my joy to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. We have been doing a series of deliverance. This is the third series. In the first series, I try to explain the four different areas of deliverance that a Christian will need. I said the first one will be deliverance from the power of sin, deliverance from the power of self, deliverance from the power of the world, and then lastly, deliverance from the power of Satan. Today, I'm looking at deliverance from the power of Satan and his demons. And I'm looking at the topic, who needs deliverance from demon power? Or you may ask yourself, do I need deliverance? As a way of introduction, Deliverance means to release ourselves or other people from the power of evil spirits, unclean spirits, or demons. There are different kinds of demon activities, such as demonic suggestion, demonic enticement, demonic deception, demonic oppression, demonic harassment, demonic torment, demonic enslavement, demonic attachment, demonic control, demonic hindrance, demonic blockage, and other kinds of demon oppression. Praise the Lord. Now, of course, what this means is that almost everybody at one point in time, at different times of their lives, we need some kind of deliverance. Sometimes demonic suggestion. You may think that it is your mind that is suggesting something. You may think it is your mind that is thinking about something without even knowing that you are responding to a demonic suggestion. It is when the person follows through with that suggestion that he will realize that he has fallen into serious error. So it can be as subtle as that. Deliverance is one crucial ministry that gives the New Testament saint a better life than the Old Testament saint. Old Testament prophets did not cast out demons. It is a New Testament ministry. In the New Testament, often you will find out that healing and deliverance goes together. When people are healed, sometimes demons are also being cast out in most cases. Now let's look at a practical illustration or a biblical illustration of the implication or indication that a person might need deliverance. We have a story in the book of Mark chapter 5 from verse 1. I will read part of the story. And then I may explain the other later. Mark Gospel chapter 5 from verse 1. It reads, and I quote, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, that is Jesus, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Now, the story of this man, he was a raving lunatic. He was a madman. And his madness was such that he could no longer live among human beings because they had tried to restrain him, bind him with chains, but the demon power in him would break the chains to pieces and would run out of the house. By this time, he was already living in the cemetery. That was his house. He was living among the tombs. And the Bible says he will be walking among the tombs day and night, crying and cutting himself with stones. Blood will be gushing out and he will be crying and still be cutting himself because of the demon power that has held him bound. And of course, when Jesus Christ got to that territory with his disciples, the moment Jesus Christ arrived at the seashore, the man ran to him and prostrated before him and said, oh, don't torment me. Of course, it was not the man that was talking. It was the demon in him that saw his superior authority and had to come and bow. Praise the Lord. And of course, Jesus began to silence the demon. What is your name? He said, oh, my, name. my name is Legion because we are many here. This man obviously had about 2,000 demons inside him. And that was responsible for his lunatic condition. And 
Jesus Christ decided to cast the demons out of the man so that the man can be free. One thing about Jesus is that everywhere he saw demons, he would cast them out. So he wanted to set this man free. And as he was about to do that, the demons began to beg him, please don't send us out of this territory. Send us into the swine that were grazing beside the sea. So demons gave them leave. I mean, Jesus gave them leave. And the demons left the man and went into the swine. And the swine, the moment the demons entered them, they themselves became mad. They went lunatic and they ran into the sea and drowned there. Praise the Lord. Now here we see a man who has lost control completely because he was totally overtaken by demon power. Now it is not everybody that will get to this level of demonization. That is, he had been completely taken over by demon power. He had lost his mind. He could not think straight, could not reason well. But we're just going to use this passage to, to illustrate what it means to need deliverance. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to be looking at some lifestyle pointers to the fact that you and I may need deliverance. The first pointer is this. You know that it is possible that an unclean spirit is dwelling in your life. Some people know that something strange, that a strange spirit is dwelling in their lives. A man came to see me some time ago and he said to me, say, man of God, as I'm seated here, there's a big snake living inside me. He knew. He knew. And not too long as I began to talk to him, the snake, he named the demon that is operating as a snake, began to manifest. He knew that there was a snake in him. And there was a demon that's, I mean, a python and a serpent snake. Praise the Lord. So in case you perceive that a strange spirit is operating in your life, you may need deliverance. Number two. If you live an unclean lifestyle, unclean lifestyle is always indicative of the presence of an unclean spirit, especially when it has become a habit that you cannot break. Maybe it's moral uncleanliness or mental uncleanliness, unclean lifestyle. You know that what you are doing is not clean, it's unclean, it's not morally clean, it's not mentally clean. You may need deliverance from demon power. Number three, withdrawal from relating with other people. You are reclusive. You are non-relational. You isolate yourself from others. This man isolated himself into the tomb. He was no longer living among normal human beings. He had withdrawn away from relationships, family, friends, and all that. He was now reclusive. He had isolated himself. So if you are that kind of person, you isolate yourself from people. You withdraw from people. You are reclusive. You don't relate you may be under the oppression of a demon. Number four, you fellowship with the dead or you are suicidal. You are obsessed with death. Sometimes you dream and see dead relatives or dead spouse. It is possible that you are under a demon power. I used to know a sister that used to see her dead father almost every time. And the dead father will come and say, look, uh, you are broke now. By the time you wake up from this dream, uh, you will find somebody who will come and give you money. And it was always like that. Every time she was broke, the dead father will appear to her in her dream and we tell her how she will get money. She will wake up and then money will come. So it has become a bondage. Every time she needed money, the dead father will come. So the morning she told me, I said, look, we have to deal with these things, but you must be ready. After breaking this power, money will not come. Then you have to learn to make money the normal way. It is not normal that your dead father will be coming to you in dream to tell you how to get money. And that's exactly what happened. The moment we broke the power, the dead father stopped appearing to her and then money vanished from her hand for a while. And I said, now you have to begin to learn how to make money the proper way. Praise the Lord. So if you are fellowshipping with the dead, you seen dead relatives or you are suicidal, you are thinking about thought of suicide, kill yourself, kill yourself, end it all, everything, this world is too bad, nobody cares and all that, you may be under the influence of a demon. Number five is nakedness. This man was stuck naked. He was wearing nothing. It is common on the street of Africa to see lunatics walking about stark naked, wearing nothing. It's one of the signs that somebody is under a demon power. Uh, some of our ladies who are who try to be fashionable, they are always posting themselves nude 
on Facebook, nude on social media. It's not normal. If you are somebody that you are giving to nakedness, you just like to be nude. Something may be wrong with you. You may need spiritual attention. You may need deliverance. Number six, restlessness. This man had no peace. He was always walking about, walking about, walking about, moving from tomb to tomb, from one gravestone to another gravestone, crying, cutting himself, never had rest. When you see somebody who is restless, he lacks peace, he does not have focus, full of anxiety and fear. And this person is always moving from one place to the other. When you see mad people on the street of Africa, they are always roaming about, roaming about from one street to the other. They may be in Obalinde now. Before you know what's happening, you have seen them in Oyibo. They will be walking about. That's restlessness. It's a sign that somebody is under the control of a demon power. Number seven, difficulty in controlling one's action. You can't control your emotions. You can't control your speech. You can't control your thoughts. This man has lost control of everything. He could not control himself. He will be cutting himself with stone. He will be crying and yet he will not be able to stop. He had lost control. So if you find it difficult to control yourself in one area or the other, I used to know a young man who was masturbating for 21 years every day. He was masturbating for 21 years every day. He couldn't control it until he went through deliverance and the power was broken and he was set free and completely masturbation stopped. I used to also know a pastor who was under a demon power of homosexuality and he has been in, under that influence since he was a teenager. By the time I was talking to him, he was over 40, going to his 50, he was still, a, he was still an homosexual until he received prayer and that demon power was broken and he was set free. Praise the Lord. So when you have difficulty controlling certain things you do, you know those things are not right. For example, you go into fits of anger after you have damaged a lot of things. You now come back to your senses. Oh, why did I do this? Why did I do that? You may need deliverance from demon power. Number eight, cursing or a tongue that is used to profanity. You see people cursing their children. I mean, the, ch the child you, you gave back to, the child you raised to the central school, you will be placing curses on the children, saying negative words, or you are used to profanity. You are always cursing. Every opportunity you are cursing. You may have a demon that is making you to do that. Sometimes a demon may sit on your tongue and making you to be cursing. Number nine, violent behaviors and attitude. This guy was violent. Nobody could bind him. Nobody could control him. People were tired of trying to restrain him, so they left him to himself. So when you have violent behaviors, violent attitude, when you have little problem with people, you go violent and all that, you may be under a demon control. Number 10, loneliness and weeping. This man was lonely in the graveyard and he will be crying and cutting himself. There are people who lock themselves in their room. They have no friends. They are lonely and they will be crying all day alone there. Those are demon or pressure. It is the devil that isolates people to destroy them. It's a principle the devil uses. It will isolate you from friends, from those who can help you, those who can counsel you so that they can destroy you. So when you're going through loneliness, no friend, no relationship, and you are alone in depression, weeping, you need to be rescued from demon power. Number 11, self-destructive actions, suicidal actions, suicidal thoughts. You do things with the tendency to destroy yourself, even though without intending to do so, you need to be rescued from demon power. Number 12, sorrow as, or sadness that gives you no respite. Sorrow, the person just feels sorrowful and sad, and there's as if a weight is sitting on him, a weight of depression and, or mel and melancholy. The person just be weighed down, be weighed down, be weighed down as if he's going to die there. That is demon power. It's the spirit of depression, melancholy spirit of suicide. If that continues after a while, the person will begin to think of suicide and eventually commit suicide. Number 13, insomnia. You cannot sleep. You are always awake through the night. Your mind is traveling up and down. It may also be a demon power. Praise the Lord. Number 14, confusion of the mind. You can't think straight. Your mind is always confused. You are going to do this one time. The next time you say you are going to do another thing. You are never straight. You are never settled. It may be a demon power. Number 15, compulsive behavior. Like something is driving you or pushing you to do something against your will. That is also a manifestation of demon power. Number 16, incurable bodily affliction. 
once some affliction in the body are incurable, they are not incur they are not curable by medicine, they are not curable by counsel or hygiene and all that. You have done everything that's not curable. It is possible a demon is responsible, and once you deal with the demon, you will find out that the affliction will take its leave. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now those are just indications of what it might mean to need deliverance from demon power. Don't forget that illustration from Mark chapter 5. Now let's look at three operational areas of demons in human life. Number one, the body. Demons operate in the body. They can latch on the body of an individual and afflict the person with disease and infirmity. Praise the Lord. Those are what we call disease and infirmity demons. Almost all the deliverance ministration of Jesus in the Bible involved disease and infirmity demons. You will see that people will be healed, demons will be cast out. Number two is demons operate, also operate in the soul. This is the strongest area of demon operation. The man we are talking about here, the demon are taking over his soul. They have control his mind. We call this control and deception demons. They are demons that walk with the soul. They are control and deception demons. They control the mind. They walk on the mind. They walk on the thought. They walk on the imagination. Number three, demons walk in the spirit. Amen. The spirit. And this is a manifestation of the spirit of death and damnation. We, we call them death and damnation demons. Demons that make sure that you don't get born again. They will do everything to make sure you reject the gospel, reject the message of salvation. They will make sure you do not get born again so that you can die and go into eternal damnation in hell fire. These are the three operational areas of demon. Any demon you will meet that you will encounter in deliverance will fall into these three areas. The one that operates in the body, the one that operates in the soul, the one that operates in the spirit. But remember, the soul is the control center. Your mind is what the devil is actually looking at. The devil can put disease in your body, but what he really wants is to take control of your mind. That is why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it says, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Your mind is the stronghold of your life. And that is where the devil is actually at, at targeting. Any attack of the devil is directed at your mind. It's actually trying to get to your mind to seize control of that your mind. Once it takes control of your mind, you begin to use your mind to serve him. And there are a lot of people in the world today who are using their mind to serve the devil, using their intellectual capacity, using their emotional, I mean, emotional capacity to serve the devil. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 4, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of stronghold. Where are the stronghold? Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. The real stronghold we need to break in deliverance is in the mind. If we cast out devils and your mind has not been rescued from controlling powers, from lies and falsehood of the devil, you will realize that you will be bound again because the real control power is in the mind. And that's why I tell people, deliverance begins with truth. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Praise the Lord. 50% of deliverance is knowing the truth. The remaining 50% is application of the truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, let me just share some steps to release before I begin to pray with you. Hallelujah. It's similar to what I shared the other time, but I need to say it again for emphasis sake. Step to release from demon power. Number one, genuine encounter with Jesus Christ. Again, having a religion cannot stop demon power in your life. The only one that has the power to set us free from demon power is the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, if you know how the demons came in, you know what you did that made the door to be opened for demons to invade your life, please repent from those things and receive forgiveness from the Lord. Hallelujah. If you do not know how they came in, simply renounce the demons in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then number four, submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You have to submit yourself to Jesus Christ. Hand over every area of your life to him. Let him become your Lord and Master. Number five, resist the demons. Command them to depart from you. Repeat the steps of resistance for as long as it take for them to leave you. Demons, again, I will tell you, they are stubborn. You have to resist and resist sometimes for them to leave. Sometimes they are not sure whether you mean what you are saying. Because for some time, you have done that thing together. And you are now telling them to leave. They may say, well, this man is not serious. But when they realize you are insistent, they will take their leave and they will go. 
Finally, listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what He has to tell you. Sometimes the Holy Spirit can tell you some to do some things that will lead to your deliverance. The Holy Spirit is the great deliverance minister. Experience and knowledge of a deliverance minister can fail, but the Holy Spirit guidance will never fail. So listen to the Holy Spirit. If you find out that you are losing control while trying to pray this deliverance prayer, you are getting dizzy or you are beginning to fall down or lose your balance, it means that the demons involved cannot be handled on your own. You may need the help of your pastor or a trusted deliverance minister of the same sex. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop here for today and I would like us to pray now. Say with me, Father, in Jesus' name, I receive Christ the Lord as my Lord and Savior. I ask that the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus will wash me clean from all my sins. I forsake my sins today. I renounce the devil and I renounce sin. I accept Jesus into my life today to take absolute control of my life in the name of Jesus. I open my heart for the Lord Jesus to come in and be the Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, I, as the Lord Jesus Christ comes into my life today, I decree and I demand that every demon power that has invaded my life take their leave now and go in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now I'm going to pray with you. I take authority against the power of the devil in your life right now. Wherever they are hiding, wherever they have come in from, I rebuke those devils. I command them to go in the name of Jesus. Be free from that demon power from today in Jesus' name. If you are sick in your body, lay your hand there right now. I'm praying a prayer of healing for you. The Lord Jesus Christ is a healer. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that sickness. I rebuke that disease. I command you to get out of your body now in the name of Jesus. I command that you be healed completely. Be made well from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Congratulations for your deliverance. Congratulations for your healing. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so right away so that you will get notifications of future videos that will be released for your deliverance, for your freedom. I want you to be free and you will be free in Jesus' name. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. God bless you. Thank you.